What's up everybody, Superbrook fan here for another car review. This is of course the 2017 Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. Huge thanks to Tom Henry Chevy for providing me with this sweet ZL1 to review for you guys today. So about the 2017 ZL1, well all new here on the 6th gen Camaro now and uh, what a beast this thing is. Let's first just talk about how awesome it looks. Uh, even more so than a standard Camaro SS with that front bumper that now juts out even more and is even more gaping wide and aggressive and uh, you have a very aggressive uh, front lip there as well and uh, even have the flow tie badge up front there to maximize the airflow to this beast of an engine. And uh, speaking about this uh, engine, it's the 650 horsepower glorious motor. Uh, out of some other Chevy products uh, and it's covered up very nicely here with this uh, carbon fiber hood and I love the ram air effect that is actually functional and uh, really looks beautiful here with the hood to give it a really nice three-dimensional look and uh, just really unique there. Uh, coming over to the side you have very wide aggressive uh, side skirts here and then coming out to the back you have of course the same great back end of all the other Camaros but you have a nice little pedestal spoiler there and of course uh, the more pronounced tips and uh, overall I mean in, in combination with these gray wheels uh, man it just looks so good especially here in this blue color uh, man what a beautiful and aggressive looking vehicle right so the interior of the ZL1 Camaro well it's very much like all the other Camaros with a couple key differences uh, but anyway first things first seeing down in these seats they are the main difference of the ZL1 here awesome Recaro seats that really just hug you in all the right places lots of aggressive bolstering here for both the torso and the thighs and uh, man I mean it's got the Alcantara inserts here so uh, uh, you know holds you in place very well with those as well and um, it also has the nice DL1 badge there and uh, the nice thing about these uh, seats they're similar to the ones in the 1LE Camaro SS but in those it's not heated and cooled because the 1LE is the stripped out package and these these are heated and cooled seats so uh, really nice and uh, luxurious in addition to being very sporty seats so really just the best of all worlds. Next to the steering wheel in the ZL1 which is again another key difference here it's uh, wrapped in Alcantara otherwise same great uh, steering wheel you get in all the uh, Camaros here. It has a nice 9-3 grip, nice little 10 2 notches, and it's a very small and uh, compact wheel, uh, which I really love. Flat bottom, and it is even heated here in the uh, ZL1. So once again, all the luxury features here that you would normally get with a 2SS Camaro, um, and you get them all as a standard uh, base feature in the uh, you know ZL1 here. So uh, really fully loaded right out of the box for the most part. Uh, but yeah, so really nice wheel. You do have some plastic paddles here behind the wheel. I kind of wish those were metal here maybe for the ZL1 uh, but still fantastic and overall great wheel. Gauges in the ZL1 unfortunately don't look any different than regular Camaro SS gauges but that's okay uh, you still have that very nice large digital portion there and the one key difference you do see with the ZL1s is the uh, supercharger boost which is uh, one of the main uh, auxiliary gauges there up top and uh, always great to see a boost gauge here and uh, you know helps uh, clue you in on how much work that supercharger is doing otherwise your same great uh, you know additional gauges you get here uh, with this digital cluster in the SS uh, and all the performance metrics you could want including uh, in the ZL1s here it has the E-diff and you can keep uh, tabs on how that's distributing the power there um, and you also have the G meters and all that kind of stuff as well and so overall very feature packed uh, gauge cluster and that's also where you can now access the new line lock feature here for the ZL1s uh, which is a, a very cool touch uh, to help you uh, have a little bit of an edge at the drag strip as well. Coming over to the center of the dashboard here again same as any other Camaro for the most part the Camaro's only really the ZL1 ones only have about three large options and uh, those are whether you want the navigation the performance data recorder and a moonroof this one has uh, the navigation the performance data recorder but not the moonroof but anyway getting back to this infotainment uh, in addition to those two features there which are all very nice uh, it's your same basic head unit uh, you know all the radio controls and everything work great uh, it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto which is a really nice feature to have these days and so overall you know no complaints there whatsoever with the screen coming down to the climate controls again all the same as a 2SS Camaro with uh, all your various controls. I still love how uh, the outside of the vents here, this ring controls your temperature. And overall,
overall very simple storage space in the ZL1. Again, all the same as the Camaro. Uh, you have a little map pocket here in the door. You don't have anything in the center other than uh, two cup holders, a power outlet, and then you have this uh, lightly padded uh, armrest that you open up and you have a little bit of storage in there including two USB jacks and auxiliary jack and that's really it. Um, there is another uh, wireless charging pad there uh, behind the center console, uh, you know, which isn't super deep either but can fit a couple additional things in there. Uh, but this car is strong so it is not a storage capacity. Back seat works in a pinch but you know nothing uh, that you're going to want to use every single day. Trunk is also competitive with all the other vehicles in this segment you know of sporty coupes uh, and it certainly is uh, very usable still you know you actually can fold down those rear seats as well so uh, you can have a little bit more versatility there uh, and overall it's plenty to get the job done for carrying home the groceries and things like that. Alright so let's start off and go for a drive. The Z01 has the same basic key as all the other Camaros and Chevy products. A very nice weight to it and uh, so anyway, of course, it's keyless entry, it's push button starts, so you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the engine start button, and it roars to life. <laughs> Alright, so setting off in the 2017 Camaro ZL1. Oh man, what a beast this thing is. <laughs> These super wide tires, you can hear all the gravel kick up against the uh, inner fender wells there. Um, but yeah, first things you notice setting off in one of these, uh, I think it's uh, you know just the same great seating position you get in all the other Camaros. Obviously, with these or cars, it feels a little sportier. Um, but yeah, you know the visibility is always limited here in the Camaros, and again, that's something that you get used to. Everyone uh, mentions that. I've mentioned that in all the other Camaro reviews. But it's not a deal breaker. It's something you can easily get used to. Um, but otherwise, you know, like I'm even in sport mode here, just cruising on this uh, park road here, and it's really not too uh, bumpy or anything so far. But we'll have to see once we get on some more challenging roads how it actually feels. Now the ZL1s of course have the magnetic ride control and all that kind of stuff that's tied into the different driving modes so you can make it as smooth or as sporty as you'd like really and we do know that there is of course the uh, 1LE version of the ZL1 that is uh, coming later on and so that is going to you know firm things up and make things even more aggressive. This is still very daily drivable and that's the, the purpose of the, the ZL1 is to be the perfect all-rounder. Still be very very capable, have supercar capabilities really um, but still be something you can easily drive every day. You got all the luxury features you could want. You got a Bose sound system and everything else so very very livable. Another thing uh, immediately uh, now the ZL1 has this brand new 10 speed automatic transmission that they developed in partnership with Ford actually and so here in the ZL1 uh, you know 10 speeds and they're promising very very quick shift times so far just cruising around here uh, it's very smooth but let's uh, turn down onto the straight road here first see how it does. Here we go. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> oh man, that made my chest hurt! <laughs> I'm like buzzing here. Whew, so, uh, as you could, might have been able to tell from the uh, footage there, it was getting sideways a little bit, wanting to kick out, but with these meaty 305 wide rear tires here, this thing does keep the power down pretty well for 650 horsepower after all. It's just, oh man, it's just crazy. <laughs> it's the most exciting acceleration I've done in a long time. Oh man, so uh, other things you note know, though, now we're just cruising along on this uh, straight road and it's very smooth and uh, comfortable, much like all the other Camaros. Um, while we're just actually cruising now with the transmission uh, in its normal mode here, it is very smooth, the shifts are indiscernible, um, and you know, aside from the different sounds, you don't really hear it shifting around or anything. And I'm, I'm happy that it also doesn't uh, hunt around for gears too much either here. Uh, it's still you know keeps it in one gear and you're not constantly hunting around for the perfect gear within those 10 uh, so it's very well behaved and very intelligently programmed I think all right so now that I've composed myself uh, let's turn on to this back road here and see how it handles 
One thing I neglected to mention in my uh, giggling fit was that uh, this thing does 0 to 60 in three and a half seconds. And I think part of the reason why I can do it is not just because of the insane amounts of power, but this transmission, uh, this 10 speed is really the, the one to get. This is the one we've been waiting for GM to make that actually shifts immediately downshift or upshift. It's very snappy. Um, and just feels great, but man, this thing, even in those higher gears, uh, they're all very short, and up, up until you get to the higher numbers of seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, um, that it's actually, it pulls amazingly well in every single gear. <laughs> And, uh, and it still is geared very normally. Like that was, this is third gear and I'm doing third gear type speeds. And uh, so it's, it's not like super bizarre. It's just those you know, crazy high overdrive gears. Another quick little acceleration here though. <laughs> this, <laughs> oh man, I, I really, really love this thing already. It's just, it's so much fun. It's almost, you know what this reminds me of is the GTR, the R35 GTRs, how that used to upshift so quickly and the gears were so short and so aggressive that it just threw you in the back of your seat and gave you whiplash. And this does that same thing because of this new 10 speed, especially. I mean, I'm sure the six speed manual is uh, no dull experience either, but I think this 10 speed just makes this thing feel like a rocket, an actual, like getting launched on a roller coaster type feeling. It is insanely fun, but because because it's rear-wheel drive, unlike stuff like the GTR, you still have a part to play and you're still managing the power a little bit, although as long as you leave all the nannies on and have it in sport mode, it lets you kick that back end out a little bit without killing yourself um, and, you know, reins it back in whenever it needs to. But, um, you know, I'm going around a few corners here, but honestly, guys, in something like this, you're not going to reach the cornering limits. I mean, we have 285 wide tires in the front, 305s in the rear, um, and uh, it's just extremely planted, extremely poised, and as long as, you know, you're not reckless with your right foot, I mean, it puts the power down very well coming out of corners and things like that, uh, so that it's nothing, uh, nothing to worry about whatsoever. I mean, the Camaros, the whole 6th gen Camaro range handles amazingly well right out of the box, even the base models. So, you know, this, it's very easy to improve upon, not that you even need to, like I'm saying, but, um, you know, it's far more handling than I think most people will ever use, even on aggressive back roads and stuff. It is just really a spectacular uh, vehicle in every single way. So what else about it? Well, I'm actually surprised the steering is a little bit lighter here, um, and honestly, the steering weight feels about the same as a normal Camaro SS, which I really love, because I know in the 1LE, the steering was a lot stiffer, and that has the same tire setup as this, in the 1LE SS, that is, um, but for some reason, the steering is lighter in this than it was in the 1LE SS, so um, I actually welcome that, though, because I like the lighter steering, and it helps the car feel more agile, and you're not fighting with the wheel quite as much going around uh, corners and whatnot, so... Um, um, I actually think the, the steering is great and uh, braking for this corner here. I mean, you got these huge Brembos that have a really nice feel to them, and uh, so they're just a joy to use as well. Another quick acceleration. <laughs> Sounds so good too with this active exhaust. You can quiet it down if you want, uh, but you certainly don't have to, and I wouldn't because it sounds great and it's great to have the customization of the uh, active exhaust. But yeah, getting back to this transmission, I just want to highlight and just try and demonstrate for you guys just how quick this shifts. quick and it's it's still not the best I will say that but it's much improved over the 8-speed automatic for sure and um, so it's 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 very impressive and I'm sure now I'm in sport mode I think track mode might even speed it up even more so um, but you know it's plenty fast for driving around in normal circumstances here and like I said whenever you want to do the maximum acceleration you just leave it over and drive don't even bother shifting it yourself manually just Put your foot to the floor and focus on the experience. And that's all that you really need to do. So, um, yeah, but I mean, like I said, it's it's really great. And I do like how it's traditionally spaced out for the most part with these gears. Like, you know, I'm at fifth gear right now at uh, 40 miles per hour and I'm turning over like 2200 RPMs. So it's not like crazy, but then, you know, if I do just let it go into fully automatic mode, then it drops down to, you know, 1300 RPMs and we're cruising in eighth gear. So, uh, but the nice thing is even in eighth gear, I step on the gas and it immediately gives me like three downshifts and I'm right in the meat of it again. So, uh, you know, you never have to wait around for a downshift. You never feel like it's hunting around excessively. And um, so overall, I'm really impressed with this 10-speed. I think they've, like I said, it, it 
improved all the things that I thought the eight speed needed improving. And um, it's just, again, now this is, a, this is um, these automatics have finally come so far that you don't have to shy away from the automatic. And honestly, if you want the maximum acceleration, the automatic is obviously the way to go. Um, the manual, you'll still never beat the feel and excitement of, you know, rowing your own gears. But, uh, you know, especially for those that daily drive these in traffic or you just, you know, want to drag race, whatever, there's all kinds of good reasons to get the automatic these days. And it's certainly no sacrifice like it once was. A few more corners here at a little bit of a higher speed. It's just so composed. Man, I love it. I'm trying to push it a little more here. And it's still... <laughs> still sticks with you. Now see, I was in normal drive mode, but it saw that I was going around this corner aggressively. It just downshifted for me. I didn't do that. It's just like, here you go. Here's a downshift. So thank you. I appreciate that. And then of course you can upshift and, uh, you know, tell it to relax again if you want, but uh, it just detects this automatically. And it's really impressive that it can figure this stuff out. So, um, yeah, just, I gotta say, they really did a good job with this whole car, the whole thing. I mean, I love going around corners and it's so flat, so composed, so much grip. The transmission is on point in every single aspect. Uh, the power is mind-blowingly exciting and just enormous, uh, regardless of what gear you're in. Um, it, it's just, oh man, and then you still have all the luxury features, so it doesn't beat you up, it's still comfortable, it's smooth, uh, heated cold seats, blind spot monitoring, I mean, you have everything. It's the perfect car, guys. Like, I mean, and this is coming from a Mustang owner nonetheless. I mean, I love this thing, and the, the price of these makes it even more mind-blowing because, you know, you're talking about supercar performance here. Three and a half seconds here to 60, and, you know, all the amazing handling and all that kind of stuff. And you get all this for, like, 62,000 bucks. Now, there's a gas guzzler tax and a few other things. This one, as tested, I think is around 67 or 68. Uh, but again, this has two of those three big options uh, that I mentioned earlier. So, you know, you get rid of the performance data record, you get rid of have, uh, you're looking easily a $65,000 car. 65 grand is a bargain, a screaming deal um, for what you get. And it just, I, I mean, hopefully these sell very, very well because I don't see how they couldn't. It's just, uh, it's amazing. And GM constantly outdoes themselves. And I'm sure that the 1LE version of this is going to be more of a handling monster, but you'll never approach those limits on the street either. So honestly, this is great. You have all the luxury features you can want. And it's just, like I said, it's, it's really perfect. So yes, um, I really don't want to quit driving this thing, but uh, I don't have too much time with it. So unfortunately, I'll have to turn it back over to Tom Henry Chevy. Huge thanks once again to them for providing me with this awesome, amazing CL1 to review for you guys today. They're getting in tons of these, both the automatic and the manuals, convertible and hardtop. Uh, so if you're interested in one of these, definitely give them a call. All the contact info is in the description below, and they'd be more than happy to help you out. Um, <laughs> These things are certainly worth uh, checking out and uh, certainly worth owning as well. Just like I said, 10 out of 10 in basically every way. One last acceleration. <laughs> oh, yes, it's not going to get old for a very, very long time. Oh, that's so much fun. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Take care.